you very much for being with us. I know you represent a district that's just a short drive away uh, from the U.S.-Mexico line. Now that Title 42 has ended, what are you seeing? Do you believe that it's too early for us to talk about a surge? Is too early for us to talk about whether or not it helped or hurt uh, the plight of immigrants and the plight of border towns? Yes, yeah, so right now we haven't experienced a surge like a lot of uh, people were anticipating. We're seeing the same numbers. We're seeing about, since April, we've actually been seeing about 1,500 to 2,000 migrants crossing a day. Yes, there was a, short, a small drop in those numbers um, at the beginning of Title 42 when it first, that first day, but we're really seeing that same average stay the same. But we very much appreciate and needed the additional support that we received once Title 42 stopped. We just hope we continue to see that support because we need the efforts of Border Patrol and our state and federal agents in the border towns to help us with this influx of migrants. Though we haven't had a surge, we still have a large number of migrants crossing to come into the United States. Yeah, I think that it's really important to specify because if you see that as an everyday American, you're reading the paper, you're watching TV, you're looking on your phone, it says, oh, there's no surge. Well, you can see it as a victory or as a positive from the Biden administration that all of the help that you're talking about, those resources, did make a difference. You could ask, well, does that mean there are any less people just because there's not a surge? There are still a lot of people crossing over legally, so to speak, going through the ports of entry and illegally crossing where there are no border agents. What has been the most helpful for you as a, a leader in your community, as someone who is tasked with coming up with solutions? Well, one of the best things is that the participation and the help we've received from our federal agents, from our border patrol, from our local police, from our state officers and agents as well. The open communication they've had, the ability to work together and work with our local officials, because those are the ones that have been dealing with a lot of this influx. Having their presence there help to protect the migrants, make sure that they come across in a safe way so that they get processed immediately, help protect Texas citizens. And when we talk about the migrant crossings, we're not talking about a rush and people running across and just running throughout our neighborhoods. It's being done in a very calm and orderly manner. We have people there to be able to process them. But what we do need is we need more processing centers. What we need, what we've been asking for for over 20 years, is more immigration courts and more immigration judges so that everyone who comes across seeking asylum can get processed in a timely and reasonable manner and fashion. Well, and I think that we're, we're showing video that's not necessarily from your own backyard, but it is along the border. And when you see what looks like thousands of people walking swiftly uh, towards the border, through water, over the walls that are even, you know, potentially there. I mean, and it could be like a cement um, barrier to a reservoir, or it could be an actual portion of border wall. Uh, but for, for what people know about this story. What do you think is the most difficult piece to this? Obviously, most Americans are extremely compassionate, but there are just not enough resources to take care of all of these people. I mean, we're showing pictures of just, it looks like hundreds of people crossing over. And in these cities, your towns, towns like the ones in your district, are overwhelmed. They are. When I talk about the 1,500 to 2,000 people a day that are crossing, that's in our small town of Brownsville, Texas. It's not a huge area. This is a big problem. This is a big resource that our city and our county takes on to try to support these individuals when they do come in, to be there with resources. They come in without food, water, shelter, and it's up to our cities and our counties and our local charities and, non, uh, and charity organizations to really try to support these individuals. And that's something that's being ignored uh, from our federal counterparts and our, at our state levels. We need more help in that regard. What, what we need do you more assistance. What do you want in terms of help? I mean, we were told the military was going down there, uh, the Biden administration sending more asylum officers to the border. But then we were told that those military officers were not going to be doing anything in a law enforcement capacity, that they were going to be taking on paperwork, administrative duties, working in warehouses. So what yeah. exactly is needed that's practical and will actually help make a change? And that was very much needed. We needed them to help with paperwork and processing that so that our border patrol agents who were doing all the, that paperwork and processing are now able to actually be on the border, have boots on the ground, because we didn't have that for so long because there was no help or assistance in that regard. What we also need is we need help with shelters. We need help with more processing centers and we need help with more immigration courts and judges. We need assistance that way. The other thing is that when people cross and come into Texas, come into Brownsville, this is not their final destination. They usually have family members all across the country that they're trying to get to. So we need help with transportation, 
getting the migrants once they've been processed, once they are there with their papers and entered legally to their final locations. And Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.